Okay, here's the problem with riding motorcycles in Canada. Winter. I live in the Rocky Mountains of Alberta, Canada. The Alabama of the North, where the only thing more depressing than our collective political ideology is how long it takes the snow to melt in the spring. Out here we're known for three things. Cows, oil, and then a package that includes truck nuts, conspiracy theory, and Trudeau stickers. But today I'm talking about snow. We get a lot of it, and it sticks around forever. This is great if you like snowboarding, but it blows if your passion is riding motorcycles. Also, it makes the truck nuts on your Ford F-150 turn blue and recede up into the frame. Anyway, our riding season is really only four good months, with an extra month on either side of that that is okay. And hey, Vancouver, before you pipe up with a snide comment like, huh, our riding season is the whole year, why don't you take a vitamin D supplement and zip it? Out here, it may be cold, but at least we have the sun. Besides, you can ride your motorcycle in Alberta even in the winter. I've done it. You just have to really pick your days and then suffer like Job. This means that every year, usually in November, I pack my bike away. I have grand intentions of doing all kinds of motorcycle maintenance over the winter to prep my bike for the spring, but I never do that. This is partly because I live in a condo, so my tools are in a storage unit and I don't have a good spot to work on the machine. And it's partly because I model my life after the grasshopper from an Aesop's fable. An addendum to that story is that ants only live for one summer. So who's laughing now? Stupid ants. I secretly want to move to Vancouver. All this is just context as we get after today's moto vlog. Witness the very first motorcycle camping trip of the summer. This ride happened in June of 2021, but it's going to happen again this year, in June of 2022. First comes the part where I have to dig my stuff out of my dark and dusty storage unit. This should have been done in April, long before I needed it. Failing that, it should have been done at least one week before I planned to go camping. Failing that, I dig it out the night before- Okay, I'll level with you. I always attend to my gear the same day I plan to go camping. Trust the process. Now, I say trust the process, but I struggle to do that. Since I always plan to get a jump on things but never do, my packing and organizing always goes hand in hand with anxiety and an undercurrent of shame. When I find myself hastily packing the same day I intend to go camping, I berate myself and wonder why I can't be more like my friend Neville. He's always organized and ready to go long before departure. Then again, I tell myself, he has a garage with lots of shelves, light, and tools. I'd be dancing around and smiling too if I had all that. Really, that's just sour grapes. Huh. Another reference to Aesop's fables. What's going on in this narrative? The fact is, even if I had all the space in the world, I'd still find myself packing the last minute, struggling with anxiety and shame. The hallmarks of my personality. Because of all that nonsense, I get off to a late start every time. And because of that, I usually end up eating some expensive, week-old material in the parking lot of a gas station. Behold. Classic first camping trip. Beginning. Rushing around packing. Can't remember everything. End up eating bad, bad, bad food outside of a gas station. It's late and I haven't even started. With that out of the way, it's finally time to hit the road on my first camping trip of the season. Today's ride will take me up the forestry trunk road. Nearly 250 kilometers of gravel that bucks and weaves through a landscape seemingly plucked from a Travel Alberta brochure. Rolling pastures, rocky streams, hazy mountains in the distance, and then a twisting track that brings you right up into them. The forestry trunk road is a bit of a misnomer. It's the road of many names in a way. The stretch that connects Cochrane via Wipris Village to Nordegg is colloquially called the trunk road, but you'd be forgiven if you called it Highway 40 or the 734. The name doesn't matter. If you stay on a main gravel track, keep trending north, you've got it. Anyway, there are signs to guide you at every junction. Camping is free along the forestry trunk road, although I think recent changes to regulations mean that you now need a public lands camping pass or something like that. I'll have to look into that for this season. All you need to do to find a spot is turn off a little spur road. Sometimes you'll find someone else in the woods. In that case, either you make friends or carry on looking for another spot. With a bit of luck, I found an isolated place, right by a creek. Nothing out here but wild horses and mosquitoes. 
That said, it's also a good idea to carry bear spray, know how to use it, and know a thing or two about how to keep bears away from your campsite in the first place. There's a bunch of cougars out here too, but they tend to leave humans alone. You'll probably never see one. These mosquitoes, they're like little helicopters. Um, so that's it for today. As you can see, I found a great campsite. I've got it all to myself. There's nobody here and I'm not paying for it. It's completely free and open. Uh, looks like it's not pristine wilderness. This is where Alberta uh, yahoos come to chop trees down like two feet from the ground and uh, create a lot of rutted trails with their four by fours and stuff like that. Um, so a little bit less than ideal, but I've got it all to myself tonight. So far at least, it's Tuesday, early season, so I expect that I'll have it to myself. I'm gonna keep an eye out for bears. I'm gonna start a fire and have a little bit of food. Um, if I had to grade today, if I were to give it like a pass-fail kind of grading system, I would say it was a pass, right? Because I am out here, just south of Nordegg, south of Ram Falls, on the trunk road, where I wanted to be. Um, I am, I got my tent set up, I got here safely, it's beautiful weather, etc., etc. But um, if I was to grade myself on a, like a percentage, I would give myself a 60, um, because I made all the same mistakes that I make every single year. Every single year, I'm like a phoenix rising from the ashes. In that, I have no memory of what I did previous season. I forgot how to pack, I forgot where everything was, uh, the usual problems that Jeremy faces every single year. And also, first time camping is really hard to break the inertia for me. Uh, I want to do it, I'm keen to go, but when I see all the steps that have to happen before I get rolling, like finding my gear, let alone packing my gear, let alone deciding you know, what gear to take and what to leave behind, all of that stuff every year seems very daunting and I don't know how to fix that. Um, that's kind of why I went on this trip today. I just wanted to break the inertia. I wanted to just go. And um, that's why I'm giving it a pass, but I'm not giving it a high grade. And now for a quick bit of housekeeping. If you're still watching this video, you obviously like it, right? Please click the like button. It's a free and easy way to support the channel. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. I'm just 999,000 subscribers away from my first million. If you like the tone and timber of my voice, I've got some good news. I have written two books, and they are both available as audiobooks. My first book, Motorcycle Therapy, is even available for free right here on my YouTube channel. It's free, I'm telling you! If you prefer paper copies, ask for my books at your local independent bookstore, or find them online at MotorcycleTherapy.com. Back to the show. The first morning after the first ride of the summer is the best. There's no searching for gear because it's all right there. You simply roll out of bed, make some coffee, and hit the road. Yep. And we're back. A uh, lazy morning for me this morning. Um, had kind of a slow start to the day, just letting myself relax, because why not? It's a beautiful sunny day. It's amazing. This campground, campsite rather, it's not a campground, is a bit, uh, well, it's been well loved by many people who don't pick up after themselves. So there's a couple of helium tanks down by the river, the bullet holes in them, um, stuff like that. A couple of plastic pails lying around with human excrement. <laughs> but uh, my immediate surroundings are fabulous. There's a couple of uh, wild horses over there. One has a little foal with her. And I'm uh, drinking some coffee and I'm boiling some water out of the river. Uh, really good chance that I could just drink the water straight from the river, but um, why take the chance when you've got a nice stove? So I'm gonna let it come to a nice rolling boil for about 10 minutes just to make sure that there's no uh, creepy crawlies inside. And then uh, slowly pack up the tent and hit the road. I'm gonna stop in at Ram Falls today, I think, just for a little 
uh, detour. It's about 100 kilometers, I think, north on this gravel road. Um, I think I have enough fuel to get to Nordegg. But we'll find out. <laughs> Anybody from Marmot is watching uh, and you feel like we've given you some decent exposure with our videos, <laughs> we could use a new tent. So this happened in Patagonia. Uh, we stitched it together with dental floss. And just now, um, the zipper finally gave out, so I tied it together. Not complaining, this tent has been through a lot and a lot and a lot. And it's a fantastic tent, and I would totally recommend and buy again. This is not a paid endorsement, but if Marmot wants to send me a new tent, I wouldn't complain. Always important to have a good book when you're camping. Uh, I brought along To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, I was supposed to read it in high school, but I never got around to it, so doing that now. Sorry, Mr. Gobbit, the book report will be late. I stopped briefly at Ram Falls, south of Nordegg, then turned in for some fuel. I've done this ride many times, and even though I know I'll make it, barring any unexpected road closures, it's always a relief when I finally gas up. From there, it's a pleasant day ride back to Canmore. That's it. That's the video. <laughs>